Bangalore, India's Silicon Valley, a bustling metropolis housing more than 8.4 million people. The once garden city now stands as a montage of pollution and concrete goliaths. Luckily, amid serious problems of soaring temperatures and frothing lakes, one such green lung of the city that has escaped the relentless march of urbanization is the forest patch around the nearby town of Ramnagaram. Ramnagaram, popular for its large monolithic granitic outcrops, making up the iconic close paid granite belt, is where the Bollywood classic Shole was immortalized in time. Film history apart, the colossal monolith as it stands today serves home to the last remaining population of the critically endangered long billed vulture in inland South India. Endangered Egyptian vultures too inhabit this area. With a massive wingspan of 7 feet, these enormous raptors mate for life. Once the male has found his suitor, the pair are inseparable and contribute equal roles in the upbringing of offspring. Typically nesting on steep cliff faces, they meticulously craft a nest each season, thus making Ram Nagaram the last suitable habitat in and around Nama Bengaluru. Vultures are the quintessential cleanup crew. Massive raptors that effortlessly soar across the skies, riding the thermal currents in the upper atmosphere. They perform one of Earth's most important yet underappreciated tasks, that of recycling and disinfection. Back in the human world, the human equivalent task of carcass disposal would cost the government an astonishing 20 million rupees annually to perform. Just a few decades ago, India, boasting the highest vulture numbers in the world, was home to 40 million of these misunderstood ill omens. But by the 90s, the carcasses were still dumped outside. But the vultures stopped coming. Can you please tell us about the earlier numbers of vultures versus the situation today? Well, the estimates for India alone are that there were 40 million vultures in India. And now there's just a few thousands left. So the declines have been over 99% for most of the species. And for one of the species, the white rumped vulture, it's been 99.9% .9 decline. So just one in a thousand that's left. This huge decline directed the search for the invisible killer towards a mysterious contagious disease sweeping across the continent's vultures. However, the misdirected search was finally put to an end when a scientist discovered a veterinary drug, diclofenac, to be the main root cause. Diclofenac is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, so which is a painkiller. So any animals which are suffering from any diseases related to the pain, so we use diclofenac. So. If the cow dies within a couple of days of treatment, it's completely toxic to n number of vultures that might eat the meat of that of that cow. Unfortunately, despite the government of India banning the use of all veterinary formulations in 2006, it is still easily available to unscrupulous vets who use human dosages. And it's as simple as that. Diclofenac, a cheap non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, is now commonplace in our household medicines and we as citizens of the modern world have a pivotal role to play in ensuring the perpetuity of our last carrion cleaners.
But why? What does the survival of a few birds far from home have to do with our metropolitan lives? Is one's justifiable first response? The answer to this raging question lies in the very fabric of the natural world, the interconnectedness of all beings. Following the catastrophic decline in Asian vultures, the rabid dogs filled in much of the void at the carcass dumps. However, the curs aren't as effective as their avian counterparts and as carriers of many diseases, most notably rabies. As a result, India now is numero uno in the sheer number of rabies cases in any country in the world. Being no exception to the trend, Rama Devra Betta's vultures numbers too plummeted from a former glory of 1500 to a mere six birds in March 2012. The state government too began spreading large sums on the rudimentary task of carcass disposal that these selfless avians carried out unstintingly. With the aftermath of the decline playing out, a shadow of doubt loomed upon the city's last true scavengers. Thankfully though, with the recent declaration as a designated wildlife sanctuary, a vital thrust has been enforced in protecting the hillocks threatened vultures and other wild denizens. Come, let us now journey into a less mundane life amidst these scintillating boulders. By the day, the scrub serves home to a plethora of avian life. It is by dusk that the most glamorous misunderstood forces are about in their magical hills. Ramnagar is home to Bangalore's closest thriving populations of elusive sloth bears, humbling elephants and highly secretive leopards. These urban predators blend perfectly in their ever-changing landscape and lead extremely fertile lives, seldom causing trouble to man. On the contrary, we do not return the favor, killing several tens of lepers every year with our often barbaric deeds. With the mongrels serving easy game to opportunistic leopards, they play canid magnets to the stealthy felines, drawing them out of their forest homes and into direct conflict with the human race. Cornered in the confines of our cities and beleaguered by panicking bipedates, this deadly game of survival seldom ends well for both parties. Back in the Ramnagar sanctuary, Trespassing tourists who flock here visiting the temple atop the summit also wander into the restricted area, causing many a disturbance that threatens to disrupt the region's innate tranquility. This is especially true during the weekends. Local news reporter turned conservationist Shashi Kumar B talks to the team and to the visiting public. Il Baruanta, Pravasi Kirana Kelgra de Nantandre, in Sanchuric declare Agratinda, you Barbecadre, Sanchurbakes to Mukha Telecom back first, uh, Bertira, plastic the Camertira, plastic Bisakira, Mate, Jora Kirtira, Cobertenta, Adunella, Niviavaga, Martiranta, Avagalan music actor, Adnivia Martira, Mate, we bakel, so Mate, you bakel address and Lamarcom bakel. 
ಒಂದ್ಸತಿ ಹೇಳ ಅದು ಗೊತ್ತಾಗ್ತಾ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಂಗೆ ಏನೋ ತೊಂದರೆ ಆಗ್ತಿತ್ತು ಗೊತ್ತಾಗ ಮೂವ್ ಆದಾಗ ಇಡೀ ಸೆಂಚುರಿಗೆ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ನೀವು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಹೊಲ್ತಾರ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗ್ತಿರೋ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಗೆ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಿದೆ ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದು ಒಳ್ಳೇದು Recapitulating his honest words, every dark cloud has a silver lining and with better enforcement of forest laws, coordination with the common man and an increased awareness amongst vets and urban folk alike, there is absolute certainty that the Rana Hadoos will remain the sentinels of Bangalore's skies for posterity.